What up, bros and hoes, peeps and creeps? This is Bodala coming to you live from the nest. Uh, I'm gonna do another game review for you today. It is very early in the morning, and I had to pull this one out of my game archives, uh, which is what I call the area underneath my desk for the games that I have not played in like five years. Um, the game is, without further ado, Assassin's Creed, the first one. Um, now, as soon as the second one came out, they fixed, like, almost everything that I remember having problems with in the first one. But, let's talk about the first one. Okay, so, a little context. I remember that this is where my first, like, video game research, uh, sort of thing started happening. And I saw this game, and it looks like an RPG, um based on uh, parkouring and disguising yourself as a monk and killing people. And that was about all the trailer told you. Um, which was cool, but that's not really what it is. You're not really a monk. You're just kind of, you kind of blend in with monks, and they just accept the fact that you're there, because, you know, monks take a vow of silence, so who the hell is going to say, hey, who's this guy? Um, so anyways... You can you can disguise yourself with monks. You can hide in bales of hay. Uh, you take leaps of faith, uh, which would kill any normal person. But our friend Altair, on the cover here, uh, he can. I guess he's an exception. Uh, so essentially, what happens is um, every assassin uh, who's a member of the order has to cut off uh, part of their ring finger and replace it with a blade. So that's their hidden blade. They can always have that. Even if their swords and everything are taken away, they can always make an assassination because they have a blade attached to their skeleton that goes through uh, their ring finger, uh, which is really cool. Um, it, it comes through, like, the wrist, but it's so that you can... But it's really cool. Um, the idea is that uh, you're essentially an order of people who can do anything without being seen or known. Uh, and that's all good and everything. Uh, let me talk about the gameplay elements. Uh, so, there are these poor people, right? And this is the first one, so you don't have money. Uh, or anything you can throw, really, except knives. Uh, you can still kill people, which is fantastic, uh, which they fix in the third one, the third Assassin's Creed 3, rather, where you can't kill people anymore, which I was mad. Um, so there are these poor people that constantly go up to you and go, Please, sir, please help me. I just need one coin. You don't have any fucking coins. You don't have a single coin to throw at them. You cannot do anything. And they just swarm around you. Like, they triangulate around you. and You can't move. And you try and push them, but then they just end up making you flail and fall down. And they will annoy the living shit out of you. On top of that, there are these drunk dementia uh suffering hobos that'll just run up to you and go dar, dar, ar, ar, and just push you against a wall and this happens during missions in combat all the time when you're just trying to sneak up on somebody then somebody just like shoves you against the wall and then they're all like hey who's that and it's so annoying um apart from that the throwing knives are really really cool uh, you can chuck them across and essentially kill anyone in one hit. Um, that's cool. If you played it on PS3, you got the crossbow, you lucky bastard. Um, but, I mean, that's not a necessary element. Uh, the parkouring is pretty smooth. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Um, the storyline... Let's go into the storyline now. Uh, the storyline doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, essentially, you start out and you're the biggest dick known to man right like you just you pretty much sorry my phone uh <laughs> you pretty much just uh you go on this mission with two other people uh you make a mistake because you're a douche and you don't follow instructions you end up getting one of your friends killed and the other one ends up having part of his arm cut off um 
So yeah, and then you just go up and be like, oh, what did I do? I didn't do shit. I mean, come on, they couldn't keep up. And they, he was just like, it is not, it is not the speed of the mission that matters. It is the stealth and the brotherhood and whatever, whatever, honor and blah, blah, blah. And so, I mean, you're such a douche. And it's so, like, you're even talking to the guy who lost his arm, who's now a guild master, um, in one of the guilds in one of the cities that you travel to. And you talk to him, and he's just like, yeah, I lost my arm. And he's just like, oh, whatever, big deal. You know, I lost my title. You fucking asshole, he lost an arm. <laughs> Like, seriously, you lost your title. Oh, big deal. You can get it back. He can't get an arm back. He's going to be permanently without an arm. And then later he says, what? Well, look, I'm, I'm sorry. And then the guy's like, ah, it's fine. Like, he's just complete pushover by then. Um, and so you, you gradually become non-dickish. Uh, and then in the end, you, you're such a badass. And you're, you're killing people and you keep talking to them, which is the general idea when you're killing people. There's always a cutscene. Uh, I wouldn't know because I haven't murdered somebody, but I assume there's always a cutscene where you have a heart-to-heart -heart with them while they're bleeding out and gargling on their own blood, but somehow speak completely articulately. Um, and so, yeah, then they just say things like, Look, we're members of the Templars, and we're after the exact same thing that your master's after. He's like, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. And then they're all like, you know what, your master is actually a member of our group. Um... And that's when Altair finds out. I don't, I don't know if his name is. I completely forget his name. Uh, but whatever his name is, he ends up. He, he's trying to get the Apple of Eden, which becomes the centerpiece of Assassin's Creed. Um, so, the Apple of Eden is this thing that essentially. It, it's the reason why you've ever seen a miracle, a ghost, a vampire, a witch, a werewolf, cabbage. I don't know. Whatever you see that's not really there, like a soda machine in the in the desert, or your reflection in the water, I guess. Or like the tooth fairy. But anyways, I digress. The Apple of Eden is essentially it's something it even creates heaven and hell. It creates all the realms. And it can create world peace. And it can do it's a it's just it's the reason why everybody's after everything. Anytime you've ever seen a magic trick or blah, 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 that was the Apple of Eden. So they all want it. It's ultimate power. You can literally uh, cast someone out of existence just by imagining a world without them. Uh, it's pretty intense. So the Apple of Eden became the centerpiece, and it, it gave you ultimate power. Whoever held the apple held control of the world. Uh, so it's essentially saying, you know, God doesn't exist. It's all just been this one little golden apple. Um... And, and so this, uh, this idea, uh, is, it's continued upon in the next Sath's Creed games, but, uh, your master is just after this apple. The whole time he is. And he's talking about honor and all this crap, but at the same time, he literally sends you to, like, murder all of his past friends. And then you murder all of them, and then the last one's like, don't you know, you idiot, he's one of us! And then, like, the first guy couldn't have said that. Um, so then he just ends up, uh, he ends up confronting him, and then he has to fight him with the apple, and then he ends up killing him and going, Look, you betrayed our order. Um, and you learn later that you bring his dead body out and set him on fire, and everybody's mad at you. So you're not supposed to set him on fire. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um... The assassinations are fine, but there's not really much else you do. Assassin's Creed 2, which I will review, um, so you look forward to that, um, was way better. Way better. And Brotherhood was even better than that. Revelation's kind of eh, because you're an old guy. And then the third one's just completely new, and I don't know what to think of it. And I have no idea what I'm going to think of Black Flag, but that was Assassin's Creed, the first one. Where you only have one hidden blade, a sword, a dagger, and that's it. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, 
if you haven't played it, you're you're not missing out if you played the other games. Uh, but the story of Altair is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much else to really say. There was no multiplayer when this came out. Um, but yeah, this was the start of a humongous franchise that is still um, kind of like earth-shattering to this day. Um, that's, that's a really big exaggeration. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Assassin's Creed, it's fun. Uh, and that's essentially my analysis. Out of, uh, let's see, I'll try and write. On a scale of 1 to 1,000, uh, 15 being amazing, uh, negative 5 being just absolutely incredible, uh, Roman numeral 4 being just dreadful, I think I would give it, um, 5 sevenths. Five sevens. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, like and favorite. Subscribe if you did. Um, I will see you next time. This is Bodala signing out.